Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Sweeney, would you yield for just one quick question? It was something I, that you had said I wanted to clarify. Mr. Who? I'll try Mr. Engelbright, sorry. I yield. I just wanted to clarify, uh, you had just said something about if we, if they file the barrel or the breach, that it would still leave an identifiable mark. Who would that be identifiable to if it was changed? It, let's say the firing pin was changed out and they took household chemicals that are under most people's sinks or they filed it down, didn't make the gun unusable, changed the markings, who then would it be traceable to? The person holding that weapon, if, you're, if that perpetrator has possession of the weapon or if it's traceable back to that person, and if the markings being made in the metal-to-metal -metal contact are unique, that's traceable. That's evidence. That's trace evidence. You're if I could just finish. Sure. The problem that we have now is that after a typical crime has occurred, a drive-by shooting, a murder in a doorway in the darkness, if an automatic pistol has been used, the shell casings redundantly are on the ground. You pick them up, they all look the same. They all have a half round uh, hemispherical shape, perfectly smooth. The police departments have plastic evidence bags by the thousands filled with these anonymous markings, each one so similar to the next that they can't be distinguished and therefore can't be matched from that shell casing back to a gun. If you, can, if you, if you have a, a technology in play that provides a mark, or if they try to alter that technology and make a unique scratch, bevel, or file, it has the same function. It has the ability to be traced. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how. I'm not sure you. I'm not sure you clarified that enough. They've changed the bevel. They've changed potentially the firing pin. I'll, I'll get back to that part in a second. Let's just say the bevel's been changed, and the firing pin's been. You have to have the gun to identify that. That shell casing is useless at that point because you can't identify that to a gun because the bevel was changed. No, the the, the guns don't come with flashing red lights that draw attention to them. Exactly. You still have to capture the gun, ideally in the possession okay. of the perpetrator. I got so you. Your point is well taken, but please let us not find our way into no. a, a, an abstract concept here. It's no. very simple. If, if a perpetrator commits one crime, it's not unusual for them a week later or, or some days later to create another crime. If they're apprehended, then if the gun has markings that are distinct uh, on the firing pin, uh, that firing pin is traceable. Well, the, and Mr. Ramos, you, why do you rise? The key there would be the that the gun, Ramos, the gun would me, have colleague, to be found. Mr. Ramos, why do you rise? Well, Mr. McLaughlin, uh, sure. Mr. McLaughlin, do you yield to Mr. Ramos? Sure, I will. Yes, uh, Mr. McLaughlin, are you aware that uh, there is a technology right now that if somebody grinds off serial numbers off a gun, such as the firing pin or the gun, that those numbers can be raised chemically. My point there was that you have to have the gun. No, but in answer to your question, if somebody grinds it off and that gun is still found, it would still, it would still identify the owner of that. Again, my point is you have to have the gun. Just if the gun, if the breach has been changed, you need the gun to identify it to that casing. That was my point there. It was not that, I think, Mr. Engelbright had originally been pointing out that even if it was changed, we could still identify the gun. And you cannot unless you recover the gun and you do match it up. The gun and yeah. it has that number, you can identify the owner. I agree. Which, we're not, we're not in disagreement. Police. We're not in disagreement with that. I guess I was just trying to clarify that you need the gun because a changed breach uh, and a changed firing pin would render that shell useless without the gun. That was my point. You still need the gun. Um, now, uh, thank you. Uh, and uh, thank you, Mr. Engelbart, I appreciate it. Uh, would the sponsor yield? Ms. Schimmel, do you yield? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thanks, Michelle. Um, earlier, I don't want to rehash the same points because a lot of speakers made similar points to what I would make, but the California police chiefs, the Mannheim letter, Susan Mannheim, mm -hmm. I could not find the retraction and I looked for about an hour because we had certainly had time to do it. Do you know when it was 
written? What was it? Was, well, I, I, again, I would be guessing it was uh, within, I believe, within two months after. But I'm happy, happy to find that letter and give it to you. I do have it in my possession. I just don't have it among my many papers here. I absolutely will get it to you. Thank you. I'd like to get a copy because I can't find I can certainly find many instances of her writing the letter in opposition to it yes. and saying things like there are too many unanswered questions with micro stamping, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay. So I'd love to see it because I have not seen that yet. And the way everything's on Google nowadays, I figured it would be there. Now, um, regarding, uh, you know, the one, one points have been made about changing the firing pin and defeating it that way. I think the truth is, most criminals are pretty dumb, and they're not going to change the, uh, the pin necessarily, and they're maybe not going to shave it down. Cause, and the reason for that is they're mostly using black market guns or straw buyer guns, and they don't really care because they're criminals. Uh, and with a stolen gun, if they cared, they'd be picking up the shell casings at the scenes anyway. But most, I think, I think the statistic I read was like 80% of the guns, the guns, not the casings, the guns recovered at crime scenes the serial number hasn't been messed with, and the uh, firing pin hasn't messed with, and the breach hasn't been messed with. And that's because the criminals don't care. So really, the way I view this is, it's just one more infringement upon legal gun owners that are not committing crimes generally. Um, and I just wanted to get your opinion on that, because it seems to me the criminals just, they're not going to care anyway. They're going to steal the gun, they're going to use the gun in a crime. Well, uh, I just want, uh, I, I can speak to that. You know, that's a very broad-based uh position and that's fine but first of all what I do know is that uh, outside of New York State I'm sorry outside of New York City and what I call below Albany most of the crime guns the majority of crime guns used in upstate are you know start in New York so immediately upstate New York residents will get relief once micro staff uh, stamping is enacted and another point I wanted to make, oop, the, the thought escaped me. I'm, I'm starting to have a, what is it, a Rick Perry moment? Uh, you, uh, but, uh, uh, well, I'll answer it in that way, that it is uh, upstate. Oh, straw purchasing. There you go. I just thought of a basketball. Now I remember straw purchasing. Immediately, and one of the things that the law enforcement council has talked about and, and why the DAs are so happy with this bill, and we're talking about the New York State uh, District Attorneys Association, it will immediately have an impact on straw purchasing, which, as you have mentioned, is a very big outlet for illegal guns. All guns that are sold, I tell my colleagues, start out legal. It is that black hole, so to speak, that causes it to become illegal. Straw purchasing is a big part of that. I dare say, if with micro stamping, you're going to have an unbelievable reduction in straw purchasing, because I'm going to be, if I'm that person purchasing the gun for someone, and I know it's going to be traced back to me, I'll be damned if I'm going to be a straw purchaser. So immediately you will be cutting off an illegal market instantly in New York State. Well, that, well yeah, assuming that we don't create a black market from other states into New York, how would New Yorkers see relief? How would upstate New Yorkers or any New Yorker see relief because of micro stamping? Well, because as I had mentioned, most guns used in crimes, the majority of guns used in crimes upstate are, are come start in New York State. Okay. They're New York State guns. Now, just regarding uh, any other states where this has been enacted, I think the answer is no. California passed a law but hasn't enacted it. Maryland did something, retracted it because of their and, problems. Uh, anyone I'm missing? D.C. D.C. not enacted it either, correct? Uh, D.C. actually adopted it, much like we're doing, signed into law. But again, uh, there are forces well beyond those of mortal men who are trying to stop it. Now, how about uh, in regards to Remington, who has said that they may in fact rethink their their position in New York, their location in New York, they employ, I believe it's either 600 or maybe 1,000 people out in Ilion where they could certainly use the jobs. What do you view Remington's position? Do you think they're going to have to retool? In other words, one production line for New York guns, one production line for the rest of the United States guns. Well, I have to tell you, I hope Remington, and, and, and I, um, I'm very pleased for Remington. They are a leader, and that's why uh, Senator Schumer actually worked very hard to give them a open up, if you will, the contracting for the um, uh, Department of Defense to be eligible. For a long time, they were cut out of that military market, and our federal uh, legislator in New York, recognizing how good Remington is, opened up uh, the RFP process, if you will, and offered uh, Remington a shot at that because they're good. So I dare say um, 
I would wonder if, why they would leave when New York State embraces them and offered them that contract. And so too, as has been evidenced with the Empire Development Corporation, they have received much in the way of millions of dollars in tax incentives and grants to promote them and allow them to retool for this. So I think, and New York is a great gun market. Why would you leave that gun market well, and give it up to another manufacturer? Well, a lot of companies have, and we had a, we had a locomotive manufacturer that packed up well, and left I don't know New about York. locomotives. We're talking about guns well, now. Well, I'm just saying that you, your point being that because they received uh, a, a government contract to which they were probably already, always should have been able to bid on, and the fact that they've gotten Empire State credits, uh, they also have a board of directors to answer to, and the bottom line speaks. And if they look at saying, gee, it's going to cost us a few million dollars to retool, and we cannot charge enough money to recoup that, to amortize that cost per gun, that's a significant investment. I would say a mm, couple of million uh, to retool, but I don't know, maybe it's less, maybe it's more. How are you going to re How are you going to amortize that? other than by passing it on to the legal gun owners of New York State. Uh, uh, once again, I respectfully disagree. I have never, I, 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 I can't swear because I, I don't believe in swearing. It is a nominal cost over the cost of the millions of guns uh, that will be sold, uh, the thousands of guns, whatever, it, it's amortized. It's a nominal cost. To for retool, the public. To, to have, retool? A, to have a, yes. all a whole new production line. Let me line. just tell you, as far as I know, Remington has one gun that would fall under this, one semi-automatic model, am I correct? I'm not sure. One gun. One gun, but yet, they're, yet they're concerned. Very small. You think they're very bluffing. Small. You think they're bluffing I that they may it. pack up. I, I hope they're, I hope, you know, I don't want Remington to leave New York, but I have to tell you, if this is the thing that will make them leave, then they'll leave on, I believe, anything, any reg or anything would make them leave. I, I, I hope it's a threat because I hope they stay, but certainly, once again, we have to think about our law enforcement, and law enforcement is being killed, murdered, in record numbers, of up 75%. Actually, crime is down significantly. Yes, we just saw the reports down, the other day. Crime. Violent crime is down significantly. So that is not a true statement. And and no, it is a true statement gun because ownership. Hold violence on. Hold with on. firearms is Hold on. up. Hold on. Let me finish. Gun ownership is at an all-time high. Matter of fact, we have gun manufacturers putting people on waiting lists. We had one gun manufacturer have to put a stop to their production because they're so busy. So violent crime is actually down significantly. Gun ownership is up. Imagine that. Okay. More people with guns, less crime. Okay. So that's not, that's not a true statement that you just made, that violent crime is up, that the statistics aren't there. So. No response? I'm sorry, what is the question? Well, the question is, why would you say that, that uh, we have violent crime going up when it's in fact just the opposite? Well, it's not the case. Crimes against police officer over the last three years has gone up 75% in the number of law enforcement officers killed. That is a fact. Where, what, uh, nationwide, New York City, where is that? Both. 75% across 75%, the country and in New York City. Over the last three years. And I will get you that. I will get you. I, you you'll forgive me. I don't have it in front of me. I will have it um, but before the end of session. And I hope my staff is listening. We will get you all these documents. The Mannheim letter and with regard to uh, police, I will have it on your door. I would love to see days. that. Have you asked Remington what they expect to, the cost of retooling to be and what they expect the increase per gun to I, be? I have not spoken to Remington directly. I have spoken to a number of people who are part of the uh, design, if you will, of this technology, the creator of it, who, by the way, is a gun owner and a uh, NRA member, mm -hmm. and he assures me, and I know it, that it is nominal for a manufacturer to tool this. To, no, Optim to, because it, there's no tooling, it's optimization. And the optimization, I don't want to get too technical, is a nominal cost, that's the only thing that would have to be changed. Other things are federally mandated anyway. There's no database, and that's one thing I want to point out, and I don't want to speak too much about it. There's no database involved, it's, it's a nominal cost. It is nominal to what? Micro stamp the weapon, or to retool an assembly line? It's a nominal cost to the manufacturer, That's it. It's nominal, nominal to the manufacturer cost and ultimately to the lawful gun owner. But there are a lot of studies that say it's $200 per gun. Maybe no, we that's split only the, the gun lobby who says that. 
Well, and your side says it's 12 bucks a gun. So well, maybe no, we my split loss, the difference. My bill money. says that. Excuse me. I was, Who says bill, it? My bill says that. Your bill says it can't be more than $12. Yeah, for the surfaces, correct. It can't yeah. be more than that. Mm -hmm. That is to... Your time is up. <laughs> Thank You're you. going to have to hold that thought. <laughs> Mr. Levine. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And Thank you. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna miss you, Mr. Miller. <laughs> Mr. McLaughlin. Oh. Always uh, interesting to follow Mr. Miller. Um, would the sponsor yield for another question? Ms. Schimmel. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Sorry, Michelle, I didn't quite get to finish. That 15 minutes goes by in a hurry. Uh, I just want to re revisit your conversation uh, with me and with a, with a colleague uh, about the ability to bring guns into New York State. Uh, are you aware of the gun laws of New York State and when you can bring a gun in from another state. Specifically, you talked about shipping a gun in from Wyoming or Florida. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of the gun laws surrounding New York State? Uh, all I do know, not necessarily, I'm not familiar with the gun laws, if you, if you will, from the other states. I am familiar with the federal requirements, the federal statutes that say that you have to ship the gun from, the, there's no interstate uh, transfers unless it goes through a federal licensed uh, dealer. As far as I'm aware, in the states surrounding New York, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, you can bring that gun in as a legal gun owner. That's as far as I can. You think in a cross carry, in other words, I can buy a gun, it's I'm a licensed gun, you, uh, let's use you as an example, you're yeah. a licensed New York State gun owner, you go to New Jersey, purchase a gun, and uh, cross the state, and you think that's lawful? I will stand corrected I, if I, I'm wrong, I, but well, I believe I, I, that is the case. We've checked with our case. counsel. You will be arrested on the spot. I don't think so, but we'll check on that. Now, next, the other question, um, let's say that you currently own, Michelle? I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm very sorry. I thought that was the question. Okay. Sorry. You currently sorry. own a semi-automatic uh, handgun, not micro stamp, because it's not the law yet. Does your bill require that to be turned in and micro stamp? No. Okay. It does not. No. It right. is new guns going forward. Okay. So, I'm the legal owner of a semi-automatic handgun in New York State, not micro stamp, because I currently own it. Yes. I buy another one. New Hampshire, Maine, wherever. New York. It now needs to be micro stamped. If it's Same delivered gun. to New York State, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. And I also, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Mr. Speaker, on the bill. On the bill. A couple of things here. I want to just point out my esteemed colleague, who I like very much, is not on the floor right now, but I wanted to point out his comments regarding the National Review and, and Mr. Robert Verbruggen, where he talked about saying that micro, stamp, micro stamping would be helpful to the police. That's exactly what the what the article says, but he neglected to finish the sentence that goes on to say, um, will be helpful to police who often find shell casings but no gun at a crime scene. It would be valuable to know what gun those shell casings came from and to whom that gun was originally sold. But mi micro stamping wouldn't be that helpful. For starters, many micro stamp shell casings, up to half, depending on whose numbers you believe, are illegible. For micro stamping law passed, career criminals would presumably be sure to carry guns that were made before it or that came from a state that does not require micro stamping. Basically what I was talking about before, we may create a black market for out of state guns here in New York as if one doesn't exist already, uh, or that had been stolen and thus could be traced only to the original owners. That's one thing regarding uh, that. Now, regarding violent crime, 
You can't get any more left-wing if the National Review is right-wing. You can't get any more left-wing than NPR. And NPR said violent crime was down for the fifth year in a row. That's according to the FBI. Fifth year in a row. And continuing on that theme, uh, for five years in a row, New York City's violent crime dropped. Last year, it crept up ever so slightly. Slightly. They still managed a 0.4% uh, drop in the major crime areas in the Bronx uh, due to a sharp decrease in nonviolent crimes. Regarding the statement about police officers, be police officers being killed in the line of duty, I never want to see, as do none of us, it's a tragedy when a police officer gets killed. But to say that this is up 75% is simply not the case. The website here about officers killed in the line of duty, in fact, it's the Officer Down Memorial page, will tell you that in 2011, there were, in fact, 17 deaths in New York in the line of duty. However, in 2012, gunfire deaths are down 54 percent, and line of duty deaths down 54 percent. Ms. Schimmel, why do you rise? Uh, I, I wonder if uh, my colleague is aware of Wait a minute. The you have to ask him, Ms. Schimmel. Ms. Schimmel, you have to ask if he yields. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. I'm still new at this. Mr. <laughs> McLaughlin, do you yield for Ms. Schimmel? I will yield for Ms. Schimmel. Ms. Uh, Schimmel I was just yield. wondering if you're aware uh, of the Operation Impact, which is a study that is done outside of New York uh, City. It involves 17 jurisdictions. Are you aware of the study of the number of people shot just between? 2011 and 2012. Are we talking about officers in the line of duty, no, which is what is I was referring people. to? No, this is just people. The officers stand, I will stand a 75% increase over three years. I, I would this tend to, tr I'm not as com closely aware of Operation Impact as you probably are, but I would tend to trust the FBI and their statistics. Well, uh, I, Operation Impact, uh, I just got this just hot off the pill that Number of people shot in the 17 jurisdictions that involve Operation Impact is up 23 percent in one year. So violent crime involving guns are at an all-time high. Yes, you're right, rapes and things, strangulations are lower, but guns, when a gun is involved, statistically it has increased year after year. No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. I mean, it, the fact's just not there. You just pointed out 17 counties, I'm talking about nationwide and in all of New York City, two areas that you talked about. So the, the facts just aren't there. I mean, you know, they're just not. I would trust the FBI statistics on a nationwide basis year over year. I would trust this Officer Down Memorial page. I think they're tracking their colleagues that unfortunately and tragically get killed in the line of duty. And the fact is that in New, in New York City, it, actually in all of New York, there were 17 deaths in 2011. One in 2012, and hopefully it stays that way. But the fact is it's down 54 percent. I mean, I don't think the statistics lie, but be that as it may, uh, I would tend to trust the FBI over Operation Impact is looking at only 17 uh, counties. But uh, thank you. Mr. Speaker, continuing on the bill. On the bill. I remain opposed to this bill because it's unproven technology that will once again infringe upon the rights of legal gun owners in the state of New York. It will put New York manufacturers at a competitive disadvantage, and it does nothing to solve the problem that we seek to solve. There are plenty of gun laws on the books. We need to enforce what is there, infringing once again upon the rights of legal gun owners. Criminals don't care. They don't care. So to infringe upon the rights of legal gun owners is something I'm not willing to do and I urge a no vote. Thank you.